Hello, and thank you for joining us to learn more about the power of formulas in a QuoteWorks print layout. QuoteWorks print layouts are used to describe the formatting and layout of printed documents, and using a formula can empower us to do things like conditional formatting, on-the-fly line item calculations, and even aggregate data for summary information. To get started, let's take a look at an existing quote. We have a list of products here, divided into three sections separated by heading lines. Let's see what that looks like on a standard print layout. Notice all of the line items, including the three heading lines, and notice the four columns used to describe the product line items. Now let's close the preview and take a look at adding some enhancements to our layout. We'll start by creating a clone of the layout that we just previewed. It's usually a good idea to clone an existing template before making changes, just in case we need to backtrack. We'll look at doing a line item calculation. We'll need to identify the correct detail section. The full explanation of the various sections on the layout can be found in the full tutorial video, QuoteWorks Layouts Basic Overview. We'll jump straight into detail section 1 because that's where the product line items are being printed from. We already have columns for quantity, description, unit price, and extended price. What if we wanted to see profit amount on the document? We can do that with a simple formula. Let's create a little space for it. We'll shrink down the description field and make sure to adjust the column headings also. And now that we have room for it, we can insert a new formula field. We need to give each formula field a name, so we'll call this one item profit. We have six insert buttons that will help us build the formula. Data fields allow us to refer to individual data elements within the QuoteWorks document. System fields allow us to refer to environmental data elements like date time, page count, and record count. A dialog field would allow us to prompt the user for input before the document is printed. And formula fields allow us to reference other formula fields inside of this formula field. We can also insert functions that help us transform the data elements that we're working with and we have operators that will control how data elements interact with each other. Notice that we have standard math operators like plus, minus, and equal sign. And we also have boolean operators and or. And we even have conditional operators if then else. Before inserting anything, it's best to think conceptually about what we want the formula to do or represent. In this case, we want to represent profit per line item. Conceptually, we know that the profit amount is basically the extended price minus the extended cost. We probably have data fields that refer to each of those, and we certainly have a minus operator. So that sounds pretty simple. Let's give it a try. We can easily insert the extended price minus extended cost. And when we click OK, notice that our mouse cursor now has this floating box attached to it. The box represents our new formula field, and the next click will designate its position. So we'll place it here next to the extended price. Don't forget to add a column header. We can quickly do that by copying and pasting an existing header, and then updating the, the text. Just to confirm the calculation, let's temporarily plug in the cost field separately. Now let's see how that looks with the Save and Preview button. Okay, so we see our profit calculations, but it's completely unformatted and rounded to whole numbers. Formatting the value is quick and easy. We'll just double click on the field, and since we're dealing with currency, we'll use the standard two decimal places and the standard symbol for US dollars. Now let's preview again. The profit numbers are now formatted like currency, so let's double check the math. 
$25.65 minus $17.70 is in fact $7.95 in profit. $5.44 minus $14.35 is negative $8.91. Now that everything's confirmed, we'll take the cost field back out. Next, let's take a look at using a conditional formula. Since we now have a formula that calculates our line item profit and we noticed a negative profit amount, let's try using a conditional formula to alert us whenever that profit amount is negative. We'll insert a new formula field and let's call this profit warning. As before, let's think conceptually about our calculation and then translate that into the field's formula. We want to alert on negative profit amounts, so that could be said as, if the profit amount is ever less than zero, then display a warning. Believe it or not, the formula builder lets us build it in pretty much those exact terms. We'll start with the operator if, and we want to refer to the profit amount, which we are now calculating in the formula field that we called item profit, so we'll go to formula field and insert item profit. The formula now says if item profit, and then we'll add the operator less than, and the number zero. So the formula now reads if item profit is less than zero. Next, we'll add the operator then. So the formula now says if item profit is less than zero, then here we want to say what the field displays when the condition has been met. So maybe we'll say warning. Notice that when we want the field to display exact literal text, we wrap that text in quotation marks. Finally, we need to define what to display when the condition is not met. So we'll insert the operator else and then no text. So now the formula says if item profit is less than zero, then display warning else display nothing. Let's test it out. We'll click OK and place our warning and we'll preview it with save and preview. We can see that the warning shows up on the one line item where the profit amount is negative. Finally, let's take a look at putting formula fields in the footer instead of the detail section. When using formulas in the footer, we have the opportunity to calculate aggregate values. We can come up with things like average price, minimum and maximum profit amounts, or total number of products on the quote. Let's try to come up with the total number of products on the quote. But before we can dive in, we need to take a look at a tricky property called the summarization type. This property appears on any field placed in the footer and dramatically affects the values that we end up with. We'll test it out with the standard data field for quantity. We'll create some extra space in the report footer and we'll insert the field for quantity. We can see in the properties the summarization type under footer fields and it has six different settings. Let's test out each of them and see what they do. We can copy and paste the field so that we can test all of them at the same time. We'll set total. Average. Count. Max. and min. Now let's preview the document. So when aggregating a field like quantity, 
setting the summarization type to value displays the last value that was used by the field. In this case, we get 6 because 6 was the last quantity on the document. When setting to total, we get the sum of all of the values that were ever used by the field. So if we add up all of the quantities on the document, we end up with 18. Average will give us an average of all the values that were used by the field. Count will give us a count of the number of lines that contain the field. Be a little cautious here. Note that we're getting the number 12 when we only have nine products that display quantities. That's because the three heading lines do actually have a quantity set to zero, even though we choose not to display it. Setting to max will give us the maximum value that was ever used by the field. So again, in this case, we get six, since that was the largest value ever used. And setting to min will give us the minimum value that was ever used by the field. In this case, we get zero, again, because of the heading lines that do have a quantity which is set to zero. Since we're really looking for the number nine for the count of the number of products, how do we actually count the number of product line items? In general, a good technique for counting specific line items on a document is to flag those lines using a conditional formula field that returns one on the designated lines and returns zero on everything else. We'll do this in much the same way that we're flagging negative profit items with the word warning. Then we can use a field in the footer with a summarization type of total to add up all of the flags. When it adds up all of the ones and zeros, we'll end up with a total number of flagged lines. So now we'll delete all of the test fields. And we'll look at inserting a new formula field in our detail section that we'll use to flag the product line items. So we'll call this the product counter. We'll use a conditional formula to effectively say, if the line is a product, then report one, otherwise report zero. The formula can tell if a line is a product by looking at the line type. When the line type is equal to one, then the line is a product, otherwise it's not. So we can say, if line type equals one, then report the number one, else report the number zero. The placement of the field won't matter much because we'll eventually come back and make it invisible anyway, but we'll put it over here next to our warning. We don't really need it on the heading lines, but let's go ahead and put it there also just to confirm that they're returning zero. And now let's take a look. So we can see that the heading lines are reporting zero and the product lines are reporting one. And if we were to add up all of these values, it would equal nine, the total number of product line items. So let's go back and add a formula field to our footer to add up all of those lines. We'll insert one more formula field and this one we'll call the product count. We just need to reference the one formula field for the counter and we'll use the summarization type to do the math on it. So we'll insert it down here near our totals. And we'll make sure the summarization type is set to total. Let's give it a label. And we'll call it products. So let's preview that. And we can see that we're getting the number nine like we expected. So now we can come back and clean up our counters. The counter on the detail lines will just make that invisible. So we still have something to count. The counter on the heading lines we can actually delete. It will still exist on those lines, it just won't be displayed. And finally, we'll make sure the borders match. And it looks like we're finally done. 
So today we've used formula fields in three different ways on this document. We used a basic inline calculation to calculate line item profit amounts. We used a conditional formula to flag products and alert the sales rep when profit is negative. And we used a footer formula to count the products and report the total number of products on the document. Though they can be a little tricky, we can see that formula fields give us the power to include much more than just line items on our quotes.